So if you're anything like me, you absolutely love the G-Shock line of products, their reliability, their toughness, and just their badassery in general. The only issue with the cooler G-Shocks like the Mudmasters or the Masters of G is that they're very, very bulky and are not the most easy watch to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. There is a solution, however, and it's called the DW5600. So let's take a look. All right, so the DW5600BB is a descendant of one of the original real OG G-Shocks from the 1980s to 1983. It was known as the DW5000C. This was the first watch to make rugged, shock-resistant watches a thing and started the whole G-Shock image that you know and love today. This watch project was started by a man that goes by the name of Kikuo Ibe and a few of his fellow engineers. By the way, I definitely butchered that name. And what they did is they set out to make the most rugged and tough watch the world had ever seen. They called their concept for the project the Triple Ten Concept. So the watch they had to produce must have a 10 year battery life, water resistance up to 10 bars, and pressure and shock resistant from a drop height of up to 10 meters. Those were the requirements for the Triple Ten Concept badge. What they ended up making as a result was a watch worthy of carrying the very first G-Shock Resist badge. And they demonstrated the toughness with this ad of the watch being hit like a hockey puck and here it is. The Casio G-Shock has a super powerful shock absorber. That's why it withstands so much shock. Casio G-Shock. Now, supposedly they got criticism for this ad for false advertising and they were seen in a negative light at the beginning, but apparently some TV news anchors somewhere demonstrated that this watch actually was as tough as the ad claimed and they actually did use it as a hockey puck. And so after that, sort of the negative image of this false advertising eventually spun into uh, proof that the watch actually was as tough as Casio set out to make it. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. We're gonna get up and close to the Casio DW5600BB and we'll take a look. Now, the initial thoughts just by looking at the watch is it's got a very sleek, blacked out, stealthy look to it. It's definitely something I admire. It's uh, fairly slim and we're gonna talk about that in just a second when we get to the actual measurements of the watch. It's uh, really cool how they have this negative dial look going on, which is sitting underneath a mineral crystal. Depending how the light hits it, you can either see the gray cutout where the actual watch display is, or it just disappears completely into a deep, deep black when there's no light hitting it. And uh, it's pretty cool. I really like it when watches have these different effects depending on the lighting conditions. It adds like a little bit of character depending on what light is hitting the watch, depending on the time of day. As you look at it throughout the day, the watch sort of has a different look. It's very, very nice. I find when watches have this sort of effect. Now, anyway, let's start with the case back. You got the signature G-Shock four screw circular case back, making it very easy for battery changes. You've got that shock resist slash shock absorbing structure badge because obviously it's a G-Shock. That's why you bought it. And wrapped around the badge, you've got the text of actual information of the watch. You can see it's got the 3229 module, at least this model has. Uh, newer iterations are gonna have slightly different modules that are updated as time goes on. Anyway, this watch uses the CR2016 battery, which is pretty easy to find, so you shouldn't have a very hard time swapping out your own battery if the time comes. The uh, the water resistant is uh, 20 bar slash 200 meters, which is double what the 1980s original was sporting. The watch measures at 12.8 millimeters thick, which is definitely not the worst, especially considering it's got a G-Shock protective layer. It's got no real issue sliding under a cuff, although I am gonna say, if you're wearing a G-Shock under a cuff, you might wanna rethink your choice of watch because it's a little bit weird to be wearing an attire like a dress shirt and anything with a cuff with a G-Shock underneath. So you might wanna just rethink your choice of wardrobe there. It's got a 39.2 millimeter lug to lug distance and that's measured from lug screw to lug screw, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. It's 39.4 millimeters wide and that's measured in between the buttons. And then if you wanna be a little bit nitpicky and get every single measurement out of the way from button to button, it goes up to about 40 millimeters. Now, as far as G-Shocks go, it's, uh, it's one of the slimmer options available for sure. And yes, I know if you're looking for something slim for Casio, you're probably not gonna be looking for a G-Shock anyway, instead go for their other models. But if you're like me and you do like the ruggedness and versatility that comes with the G-Shock badge, uh, this is a great compromise between all the features that the higher end G-Shocks would have and the slimness of a normal watch that you would also want. I find it's a great middle ground, this watch. Now, functionally speaking, it's got what you'd expect from a basic G-Shock. There's nothing too, too fancy here, like a heart rate or their new atomic clocks or anything like that. You've got four basic buttons, your adjust, your mode, your light and your start button. The mode function cycles you through four different modes. The very first screen is gonna be your default screen. This shows you your day of the week, the day of the month, the year, the time, which is programmable to 24 hours or 12 hours AM PM display. 
you've got an alarm function and uh, this menu also has a signal function which is basically where the watch beeps at the strike of every hour i've today have not found a good use for this function because if the watch is just beeping at the strike of every hour I, it's just annoying I, I haven't found a practical reason to have this but maybe you will You've got a countdown timer that goes from 24 hours to zero. And finally, your last function is a stopwatch that can obviously start, stop, and then be reset to zero. Now, the nice thing is too, as you cycle through the modes, if you look at the top right of the display, it'll automatically change to display your time, which is obviously the most important thing because we're talking about a watch, right? Practically speaking, it's a nice automatic function to have because as you're cycling through the modes, you don't find yourself having to cycle back to your default menu to go check the time if you are using the other options like the stopwatch or whatever it may be. It's just nice that they thought of this from a practical standpoint, which makes sense because it's a practical watch. So now the light function glows in a teal slash bluish hue, which gives you no problems for visibility whatsoever. The entire dial lights up. I actually prefer this color of, of teal and blue compared to some of the other Casio models that glow orange. Blue to me is a more, it's an easier color on the eye, especially when it's dark. I find orange is just a little bit too jarring. So really it's everything you would expect. And I'm not gonna lie, this is a great, great, great little watch to have for any manual labor, hiking, anything you'd be doing where you'd expect your watch to be taking some beatings, taking some scuffs, this is the watch for you because obviously it's a G-Shock. Any G-Shock is gonna fulfill that role. I do have a few gripes, however, but they're mostly pretty minor. The strap goes without saying, it's just a standard G-Shock resin strap. This particular one is very well broken in and so it's developed a nice supple flexibility about it. But I do remember it being quite stiff at first when I got it, which is pretty common with resin and just common with Casio products in general. They also do the typical Casio bends in the strap near the lugs, which helps it curve and hug your wrist a little bit better. So it definitely does help the strap out because it is gonna need all the help it can get. Also the protection layer around the watch is elevated off the dial. Now this is normally a good thing because it reduces the chances of the actual crystal coming into contact with anything if it hits the floor. So this is a positive. However, it does bring with it just a very, very small negative and I am being a little bit nitpicky here. It's just, it's pretty apparent when there's like dust and crap that's stuck in the, in the crevices of, of your watch and it's just a bit annoying. So, so far there's nothing really major to complain about. However, in case you haven't noticed, the actual rubber near the buttons of this particular watch is chopped off and yes, I did that myself intentionally. So normally the buttons you see here don't protrude out as much and that's because there's normally more of a rubber layer surrounding these buttons. However, if you're like me and you have fat fingers or even if you're outside and you're gloved, let's say, these buttons are extremely hard to press and it can be very very annoying, especially if you're cycling through modes to get to a specific function like the timer or whatever. It is pretty annoying to have to constantly be putting a, a lot of positive pressure to get the watch to actually do what you want. So basically what I did is I took a knife and I started shaving off the rubber to expose more of the button. And I can say for sure that the buttons themselves were not the problem because now they press down very easily and comfortably. It was just that the rubber surrounding it was so thick and it recessed the buttons into the case a bit too much. So it took way too much positive pressure to get the buttons to actually actuate. However, I'm not gonna recommend you do this and chop off some of the rubber yourself, even though practically it does make it a little bit easier to use the watch. And because ever since I've done this, the alarm or the, just the sound that the watch emits is crackled a little bit. So sometimes it's a, it comes out a little bit muffled or it crackles or it even like chops the alarm in the middle of it. And I, I can only assume this is from water damage having leaked into the speaker. That's my best guess. I can't say for sure, but all I know is ever since I cut the rubber off a couple showers later, the watch started to have a little bit of an abnormal sound to it. And it's not every time, but it does happen from time to time. So I can only assume it's speaker damage. But anyway, all in all, this is a fantastic functional watch for $100. Very sleek, very stealthy fighter jet looking, and it makes a fantastic compromise for those of you who maybe are not willing or not ready to buy the bulkiness that comes with the full-fledged hardcore G-Shocks, but you also would like something that carries the practicality and the functionality that comes with the G-Shock badge. And so I find this is the perfect middle ground. I, I like how Casio is sort of catering to everybody. You have the guys who want maybe the very hardcore mud masters, you know, the really big watches that are like 50 millimeters plus. And then you have the guys who want just like your very basic digital watch. And then you have the guys in between who want a little bit of both. So I really do like how Casio 
Casio does cater to every kind of customer that comes their way. And so if you are looking for a nice compromise between all these options that I've mentioned, definitely look into the Casio DW5600. There's many, many models now in many different colors. You're going to have to just go on the Casio website yourself and just take a look at all the different variants. This is the DW5600BB. It's a slightly older model, but it stood the test of time and uh, it's definitely been my go-to watch for any sort of manual work or any sort of tough days hiking or whatever it may be. So this was the Casio DW5600. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below if you have this watch. Let me know how you like it. And until next time, I hope you guys stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.